Oh, Captain, my Captain. I have failed to achieve a victory. Again, the Protoss have defeated me. My micro was decent. I macroed okay. But alas, my ladder points were taken away. Perfectly, I played not. Roaches, I possibly should have got. Other mistakes, there were a lot. Those I will not try to hide. Oversupply was sometimes wide. Some units I lost needlessly. Some minerals I spent slowly. I fought valiantly, but in sadly vain, my opponent just pressed A to bring the pain. Bit by bit, Protoss drives me insane. At the ends of my wits, I am stuck. So tell me, Protoss Imba, or do I suck? Beautiful imbalance complaint poem here, coming out of Morgurth, um, a Zerg player in the Diamond League with 3,900-ish MMR on the European server. The question is fairly simple. Is Protoss Imba, or does he suck? And we're here to find out. And what better way to find out than to just watch the game here on Moondance, PvZ between Tokus and, as mentioned before, Morgurth, our imbalance poem submitter. Ooh, look at this. What is this? He's just going to check if it's a 12 moon and head back home straight away. That's a pretty cool move. This isn't time for a block, by the way. Sometimes you see people uh, open up with a quick probe scout and then not block, and it consistently pisses me off. Literally every single time I see it, it just makes me a little bit upset. It really does. Yeah, it's just literally just scouting for a 12 fool. I really, really dislike this type of play. Ah, you're investing so much money into sending this probe quickly. Why don't you just do a post gateway scout? It gets you like 60 more minerals or so, 50 more minerals, and it gets you the information at a good enough time where you can still respond. Oh my God, it's a Nexus first user. I know we're supposed to be looking at the Zerg player, but I hate people that build Nexus first. And it is not even because I dislike the Nexus first as a, as a build order. I actually think the Nexus first as a build order probably has some legitimacy. It's a little bit like beards. People, you know, beards by themselves. I understand why some people have them. It's annoying to shave and it might even look good on some people. But people that are into beards, and like when I say into beards, like really into beards, you know, they talk about the, the oil and the different, what you call it, like the, the combs they have and just all the like the little beard scissors. It's just, it, the moment a beard becomes a hobby, you know, something is wrong. It's not a hobby, it's facial hair. It's the same with Nexus First. People that play Nexus First a lot, I always feel like there's something a little bit off with them. I don't, can't quite, I don't know what, but they're always going to like Ertos camp or they play some other crap two base all in where they want four extra probes in the early game. And another thing that Nexus First players often do is that they send out a pylon scout and then not block the hatchery. This is one of those things within the Nexus First community that I absolutely hate. Now, I understand that Tokus can't help it, that his replay got sent in, and I usually don't get upset about the opponents of the submitter, but I really, really dislike Nexus First with a pylon scout without blocking the natural. This is like extremely triggering for me. It, it 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 genuinely upsets me. This is the type of stuff of nightmares. In my like my vision of what hell looks like is being forced to watch StarCraft, where two Protoss players play against each other and just play Pylon Scout Nexus first the entire time without blocking each other's Nexus. This would be legit the worst scenario that I could have in my life. Let's see, did we miss anything during this? Don't think so. Oh, no, actually, we did miss something. What is this? Two overlords being built right now. Now, that's technically not necessary. One overlord here would have been fine because uh, the 52 uh, supply block that you get as a Zerg usually gets ended by this hatchery finishing. So the build order here isn't tight. Now, I'm willing to say that this was just an honest mistake and uh, that he just double clicked on the overlord. Sometimes this happens when I play Zerg before uh building my first overlord or before building my uh my pool i built two overlords accidentally that happens as well you know mistakes happen so i'm gonna say this is a mistake it's a bad mistake that costs you a fair amount might even delay a queen here or there but it it does it does suck a little bit now there's something already that's pissing me off here and okay there's actually two things that piss me off 
No, there's three things that pissed me off. The first thing that pissed me off was the Nexus first. Then the fact that the Protoss put the Stargate in the wall, which is never necessary on this map. Absolutely never necessary. You can just properly wall this with two buildings. Um, but what pisses me off is the fact that Morgoth didn't use this information whatsoever. Okay? I think he scouted the fact that this was in the wall but then didn't use it. Why are we building spore crawlers that finish at the four minute mark or 405 when you know and you can confirm that there's not going to be any Oracle until at least 520 or so against a single void ray you don't need a spore and you especially don't need a spore in your natural these could have been two drones that would still be mining and yes i know this is nitpicking but it's important that's two drones uh off of what like right now there's 16 drones mining here 16 here 32 so it's like what six percent or so eh, a little bit more probably seven ish percent or so that you could have could have gotten added into your eco it's I just don't understand how that is possible. I, I really just don't. Like, you get the info, you don't need anything. And it, it always pisses me off when I see people, um, like a Protoss player builds a Stargate in the wall and then the Zerg player not using it for whatever reason. It's like, mate, if you get free info like this, I'm going to be abusing it, like, for sure, you know? This is when back in the day, there's like a, a vending machine we all had these vending machines, you know, the vending machine that where, where the, the, the the Coke, the Coke can was like 30 cents instead of one euro 30. And you just kept buying the Coke cans in that vending machine until they figured it out. It's the same here. As long as this Protoss player is building the Stargate in the wall, you're going to be abusing it. Like it's a, it's a shot for open goal. Why would you try and miss it? No, you just, you take it, you get a goal and you go on, you go on with your day. Um, layer on the way here which is relatively okay timing. I like that. I even like that we're not rushing into an Evo chamber with this heavy of a Void Ray style. I also really enjoy the amount of queens that are being built here. I do have to admit that I don't entirely understand what has gone wrong, but I know that something has gone wrong here on the, on the Zerg side because the worker count feels relatively low while having zero units whatsoever. Two links have been built in total, and yet it feels like the worker count should have been a bit higher. It may, maybe it's just a feeling, and maybe I'm wrong. It just it feels a bit off. I don't, I can't quite put my finger on what went wrong. Maybe we're lacking an inject here or there. Um, it doesn't quite seem to be the case. And would be weird as well, because really nothing has happened in this game. Creed spread so far is looking... Ah, uh, is it good? It's fine. This is... Nothing has happened yet, creep spread. You know? Hey, what is it? Everyone uh, has a plan until they get punched in the face. And right now, Morgan hasn't been punched in the face yet. Now, there is one thing here that I kind of want to be critical of again. Um, and uh, that kind of ties into the being punched in the face. So before you get punched in the face, you really should try to make sure that no one can punch you in the face. And if you know your opponent is massing void rays, one of the things that that includes is spreading out links around the map to know where void rays are coming from. Now that sounds like, like a lot of work and on a map like this, you probably need to spread six links. If you don't want to do that, another thing you can do is preemptively spread out queens in like a 4-4 or 5-5 five, five split, depending on how many queens you have. Because right now, there is one, two, three, four, six queens over here. You have one queen, so there's like seven queens, basically, that are not very near the main base. And these void rays are probably headed towards the main base area, and that could be an issue. Um, another thing is, if you don't pre-split, like ideally you probably want like maybe four over here and then four over here, or four over here and, and four over here, uh, is that your opponent can start bouncing between bases. So right now these void rays, they can probably take out like maybe a couple of drones. Go, we'll go for a layer, maybe? I think the transfusion should be fine. Maybe too late. It's gonna be pretty close at least. It's gonna be really close. Mm. Yeah, I, I think this is a bad move out of toss. So this actually is going to be a fine trade, but that doesn't mean that you didn't make a mistake. You should have either pre-spread or you should have had vision around the map because vision is really important against higher void ray numbers. They often come in, they kill stuff really quickly, like your layer did go down now. And if this Protoss would have been a bit better, he could have uh, popped between the main base and this fort and definitely gotten a cancel on the fort base without losing four or was it five? 
for Void Race. So, yeah, not a huge fan of it generally, of, uh, of, of, of having all queens in the exact same group, just kind of standing forward on the creep or uh, all being used as one unit. I don't think that is the correct play. And this is also a big one. This is, th this is the type of stuff that makes very little sense to me. This is after something has happened already, pretending like it's going to happen again two seconds later, despite the information being fully available that no more void rays are being produced right now. You could just pop in here and know that that's not the case. These hydras right now are defending nothing. This is like, uh, this is virtue signaling, basically saying, oh, we're so safe in the main base. We love regulations. It's like, this is completely useless. There's no more void rays going to show up. And these units should be at the front right now, defending other bases or at least being in a more central position so the moment things like dt's come in you actually have have something of a decent another interesting move out of morgurt what is this hey this is i'm gonna have to show this again this is unbelievable. So drones and DTs, for the people that are not aware, have the exact same movement speed. I believe it's 3.94 or 3.95 movement speed. So this means that if you're a drone and you see a DT, you can run away and the DT will not be capable of catching you unless you're going around corners. Whenever four DTs move into a drone line, the best thing to do usually is to run away with the drones. It is not to fight. It is a bit as if... Um, you're in the shower, you know, naked, without any weapons, and a, a guy with a massive blade, a two-sided blade and a weird-looking cloak comes into your shower, and he leaves the door open. So you have the possibility to run, but your decision is to grab the shampoo bottle and start hitting him with it. Yes, it might hurt a little, but the moment his blade touches you, you're probably dead. It would have been better to run. And with a large blade, it's also fairly difficult to run. Um... So yeah, I, I'd recommend running if you want to stay alive. Then hold positioning near the spore. I guess the reason for that is because you don't want the spore to die. Makes some sense after you lost the lair, actually. Yeah, it was a good call. I like that. I was going to say it makes no sense, but no, that actually makes sense. In a normal situation, I would say that is the incorrect call. It's best to always just run away. But in this scenario, hold positioning around the spore afterwards. If you lose the spore, you probably just lose the base. So I, I don't mind the call completely. Good stuff game right now is in favor of of who triple immortal being produced there's not that many units for toss there's quite some freedom for zerg as well which is a is, is a resource that you can't really see in the in like any of these tabs but free freedom basically what i kind of count as that is the the ability to build drones without being annoyed so right now, Zerg probably has another like 15 to 20 drones where they'll be capable of building those without truly being annoyed. Like they have plenty of units to, to deal with any threat coming their way in the next, I want to say minute or so. Definitely the next minute or so. So yeah, you, you can go up to 80 to 81 workers. And that's exactly what's happening here. I think that's the correct call here out of Morgoth. I think this is the incorrect call. And it also doesn't make any sense. You, the way that Zerg works or the way that in general attack optimization tends to work is that okay this made absolutely this was a really bad move it does manage to snipe the prism but it still was a really bad move the way that attack optimization works is the moment that you stop droning is the moment you're the weakest with your army right because you've been building drones and now your eco is, is is boosted from that from from all those drones you need to wait a little bit for that to pay off and then you can get a lot of production you'll get a lot of money so usually you want to after you stop droning you need some time to create an army attacking straight away after stopping droning is a completely nonsensical play um, that i'm not really down with i i actually think that is a a, a fairly big mistake and also losing the our good friend Morga, the bunch of Hydras, which is expensive. Hydras, whenever you lose Hydras, you're losing the ability to tech later on in the game because they're so expensive when it comes to gas as well. We really do need to see A, extra upgrades um, on these Evo Chambers, B, uh, an infestation pit, a lurker den, 
just any type of tech that eventually starts dealing with large numbers of robo units because well let's face it the opponent is building three robotics facilities and it's producing from basically all of them there's archons on the way as well so yeah upgrades and i i think infestation pit before lurker then would be correct here as the lurker then without the seismic spines and without the adaptive talents upgrade is not actually that useful colossus even outrange lurkers if lurkers don't have their own range upgrade which feels extremely wrong i do like this i think this is a brilliant move Ooh, too much is being split off but i think in general oh he, he just didn't know the army was there oh no i take every word i just said back no way okay okay i thought that this was a counter attack that was being set up here out of the zerg to basically deal some damage while the protoss is standing on the edge of the creep but what happened in reality is that the zerg has so little map control and so little map vision so little understanding that the zerg actually wanted to attack this was an an, an attempt of an attack this our zerg player was going to all in and now realize hey wait a second i'm actually being still attacked but literally no vision on this army whatsoever good control on the banes connecting with all of those zealots was important so despite the the map vision being terrible the actual fighting here was pretty good the transfuses were good um the bailings connected with the correct units you want to move the queens a bit forward to tank some of these colossus shots but overall this was honestly a, a very decentish fight here for zerg i kind of like that i mean losing that base sucked if there actually had been a, a ling run by happening at the same time or a bailing run by at one of these bases I think this game would now be over in favor of the Zerg player, but because that's not the case, it's still going to be a little bit yikesy in my opinion. Good positioning again. I'm actually kind of impressed by the fighting skills here of, of Morgurt. Morgurt said that, the, that, that his micro sucked or wasn't as brilliant, but I actually think the control so far in this game has been quite good. Okay, this is obviously bad. Losing every single link to DTs. Mm, some, some stuff is being killed in here. Ooh, these could morph into Banes later on very little supply for the toss right now and here's another cool trick that you can do is when the protoss player is completely distracted you could attack another area at the same time here we see some classic non-multitasking where things are happening in in a sequence basically or like in order so i want to see if this was a decision or if this was uh just bad multitasking so basically right now if you're already causing gale chaos somewhere else you, you if you're already causing chaos somewhere else you want to do it at the same time in in a second location to complete it and you can often deal a lot of damage okay i want i want to just see if this okay this was a decision it's always important to note whether um people are slow or if they're really dumb in this case, Morgan is just really dumb. He looked at that fight, saw the super battery, saw the Colossus with 2-1 upgrades, and was like, yeah, 50 links. Those are the units that I want to send into those three Colossi. It's a... It's a huge error. Massive mistake. What is this? The prioritization here is not brilliant. Luckily, uh, no response out of the Protoss. 47 workers left, by the way, for Toss, which means that right now Zerg is winning in a huge, huge way. Absolutely. However, the tech still massively sucks. I mean, we're still on a lair. Um, we have a Lurker then without upgrades. We're actually building Lurkers, which I think is probably the only way to lose this game. Lurkers without range don't actually deal damage. There's no more Bailings remaining, which means that Zealots all of a sudden are good again as well. And we're building 56 links. So uh, some debatable decisions are being made here by Morgoth. Despite being in a close to unlosable position. At least to me it feels like a close to unlosable position. Okay. It's losing a lot of these Hydras. The, the problem with Zealots is, is that Zealots are actually good against Hydras. If there's nothing to defend them. And if you just have like five Banelings here. That's already a completely different fight. These ba these Zealots are not having a good time at all. And then uh, you keep some Hydras alive. Yeah, this is... There's no Observer though. Oh, no, there, there are Observers. They're just... Well, they're not even slow. They just weren't with the army. This feels bad all of a sudden for Morgurth. Like this was a, a very, very poor fight. And just... 
purely based on the lack of upgrades, the lack of having a, a solid unit composition to deal with this army. Like right now, there's nothing that can actually kill Colossus. It's going to be Hydras or Lynx, and the Lurkers don't actually have enough range to even damage these Colossus. So these four Colossus by themselves... Eh, do you, what are these Lynx actually doing? Well, not much. Now they're going in for a run by. They could have done this a lot earlier, I have to say. A lot, a lot earlier. Or they could have gone home and morphed into Binglings. Also would have been a useful thing to do a little bit earlier. These have just been idling. I also wouldn't have minded having links in an army while you're attacking with Hydras. Sure, they're not great against Colossus, but at least they, they, they tank a little bit of damage. Not a lot of damage, but at least a little bit. It will take like six, seven seconds. And if your opponent is all inning you, off of like, what was it? It was 47 workers earlier. Then it's probably a good call to just throw everything in the... In the kitchen sink at them like this type of stuff here you see the links are actually tanking enough so that the high rush can get in range that definitely could have happened with those 50 links that were on the top side the entire time or the 45 links or however many it was because then you just have enough tanking ability all of a sudden this game still is 12 workers i don't know about that one is that really what we need right now like we're, we have enough larvae as well. We're just not producing stuff. Two more workers going back up to 89. While Protoss is on pure zealot. And 70 workers. No banelings. Did he just attack his own creep tumor? We get a prioritization here on the zerglings once again. This has been a... Just a very weird game overall. I just don't understand it. I guess just a missed move command or something. <laughs> <laughs> it always feels a bit sad. This is the, the control often in the fights was quite good. Okay, it's over. Actually lost to mass zealots while having a bailing nest and plus two available. And having a lurker then as well. This entire game just made no sense to me. Like, it almost felt like... There were two people playing this game, one in charge of the decision making and one in charge of the control. Like the control at times, I was actually quite impressed by it. And even some of the like the run buys was quite good. You had like like not the execution within the run buys on what to attack, but just the fact that run buys were happening. Like the speed here was okay-ish. It's just the actual unit composition, the fact that we had no no hive, lurkers without upgrades, no bane links for the most important fights that were there. Like, don't forget, the exact same comp fought like three times for Protoss, and only the final time did it really su succeed, because there was literally zero Banes in that composition, and I guess there were six useless Lurkers. This game was actually insane, and I could just give my usual spiel, but as I got a poem in the complaint form, maybe I can make a little poem myself as well. Let's try. Oh Morgurth, oh Morgurth, I hear you complain, but watching you play is giving me pain. A void flyby was to be suspected, yet you left your main base unprotected. The DTs in your third were handled real bad, leaving half of your eco dead. No upgrades for lurkers, no vipers or hive, quickly brought an end to your life. This poem has ended, and my favorite Pokemon is Muck. Ah, right, I forgot. You suck. All right, that's going to be it for today's episode of Is It Inba or Do I Suck? If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thanks so much, and bye-bye.